Tom spent seven years digging into the world of whistleblowing. He got to know the people. Uh, there are a lot of heartwarming stories, but also the larger cultural context in which whistleblowers operate, the challenges of being in a corporate culture where just getting along is where all the signals are at. And then what, what kind of a psychology, what kind of special breed of person would actually stand up and be a whistleblower? That's all in the book. Uh, it really is a tour de force. I encourage people to look at it. And uh, as welcome Tom Mueller. Thank you very much, John, and thank you uh, to all of you for what you've done. It's been an inspiration for me, seven years of delving into your stories and your thoughts and your courage, and it's a privilege to be here today. Thank you to the National Whistleblower Center for inviting me to say a few words, as you said, a few more words about Ernie Fitzgerald, a pioneer whistleblower and a remarkable human being. His full name was, well, A. Ernest Fitzgerald. His friends called him Ernie. And as Senator Grassley said, but let me correct the senator slightly, uh, President Richard Nixon in the, White, in the Watergate tapes called him that son of a bitch. <laughs> there was no uh, elision. Over the last seven years, I've been fortunate to meet and interview many of you uh, while writing my forthcoming book, Crisis of Conscience which is a celebration and an analysis of this ongoing age of whistleblowing we live in. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces here in the audience today, and I look forward to meeting many more of my whistleblower heroes later on. During my hundreds of conversations with whistleblowers, attorneys, lawmakers, and other champions of the whistleblower cause, I've noticed a few common traits shared by effective truth tellers traits which seem to be rooted in your basic character. Ernie Fitzgerald embodied every one of these central characteristics of successful whistleblowing and every one of the characteristics that I've seen and witnessed in your work. Characteristics that I've found deeply inspiring, both as a citizen in a democratic nation and as a person who believes that ethics, good old fashioned ethics, really matter today more than ever. So what are some of these strengths that you and Ernie share? First and foremost, courage. That's an easy one. Ernie Fitzgerald dared to take on the Pentagon, as Senator Grassley suggested, in 1968, at the height of the Cold War and the Vietnam War. As one of the first modern whistleblowers, Ernie spoke out long before many laws to protect whistleblowers even existed. Together with Senator Grassley, for decades, his stalwart, most stalwart ally in Congress, as well as his close friend, Ernie Fitzgerald drove the passage of laws to encourage and defend whistleblowing, laws that many of you have since used to make your disclosures. In blowing the whistle himself and in helping to pave the way for future whistleblowers, Ernie Fitzgerald showed the same kind of courage that many of you have shown, the courage that we've come here to celebrate on National Whistleblower Day. Another of Ernie's vital qualities was his innate public sense of public service. He once said, there's no such thing as government money. It's all the people's money. Ernie had an infallible ethical compass, yet another quality I've seen in many of you. Even when everyone else is telling you to go along, to get along, to be a team player, you folks instinctively know the difference between right and wrong. You never step over that line. Or to put it another way, Ernie Fitzgerald, like many of you, absolutely hated fraud. There was a visceral hatred at the, at the cheating of the American public that he witnessed, that he just couldn't abide. Ernie also showed an almost incredible stamina, an endurance to keep fighting and never to give in to despair. When you review his years-long battles with, against various powerful offices and powerful people, including a sitting president of the United States of America, you wonder how he managed to hold body and soul together. Part of the answer, and another key characteristic of successful whistleblowers, was his strong bond with family. The support that he received from family members, particularly his wife, Nell, who urged him to tell Congress about massive fraud in the Pentagon, whatever the consequences, because she couldn't respect or live with a man who didn't tell the truth. Another reason for Ernie's enduring success as a whistleblower was his wonderful, wicked sense of humor. 
He was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama, and could play the slow talk and country boy right up to the point where he skewered his opponent with a rapier-like southern wit, quite often before the person even realized what was happening to them. You also get the sense that Ernie used humor to keep his sanity. Ernie's humor made his disclosures memorable, sometimes unforgettable. He dubbed the Pentagon technocrats who looted the public purse the high priests of waste, and in fact wrote a wonderful memoir, which I recommend to you all, by that same title. And he called what they and their accomplices in the big defense firms were doing to Americans the golden fleece. He made the $640 toilet seat on a military plane into a shining illustration of the vast waste built into defense contracts. One congressman said this precious seat gave new meaning to the word throne. And soon, a famous cartoonist started hanging in that toilet seat throne around the Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger. Ernie once got the TV evangelist Pat Robertson on live TV to lead what both men called an industrial strength prayer to jail a general for Jesus. You can't make that up. <laughs> but maybe the most vital reason why Ernie Fitzgerald was able to blow the whistle so loudly and so clearly was his remarkable gifts as a teacher. And here again, I found many, many of you to be powerful teachers. You've had the time to think things through, maybe more time than you wanted to think things through. <laughs> Ernie thought through some of the big questions in government service and in life and gave us important answers. He taught with clarity and a wealth of detail the deadly threats of the military industrial complex to our republic. He taught the fundamental foundational importance of whistleblowing to a democracy as one of the purest forms of free speech and civic duty. He taught that even in this age of cynicism and self-interest, and perhaps above all in this age of cynicism and self-interest, we must live for our ideals, that concepts like justice, truth, duty, honor, integrity aren't just words, but birthrights worth fighting for and sometimes worth risking all that we have for as many of you sitting in this room today have done. I salute Ernie Fitzgerald, who passed away this January at the age of 92, but whose tireless defense of our ideals lives on. In his decades of courageous, creative, tenacious, and sometimes hilarious truth-telling, Ernie Fitzgerald taught America what a real whistleblower looks like and showed us all that whistleblowers can be the conscience of this nation. Thank you very much.